Thank you, Lord Jesus. You are welcome. 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 My Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Men of God, how are you doing? Mr. Rai, good afternoon to you, sir. Palisa, good afternoon to you, too. Uh, good to have you. Nora, good afternoon. Good to have you here. Fondo afternoon. It's good to have you here. Nancy, good afternoon. Uh, it's so good to have you. So good to have you. Mm, my Jesus. You are welcome. You're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. Wherever you are tuning in from, I want to welcome you in the name of Jesus. I want to welcome you in the name of Jesus. I want to welcome you in the name of Jesus. God is so good. God is so good. I appreciate, I appreciate uh, those that are sharing. I appreciate, I appreciate, I appreciate. JJ, uh, Manger, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. My God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Precious Jesus. Thank you for the anointing. Thank you for the anointing. After the prayers, I'm seeing things. One of my colleagues, after teaching him everything now. Also after the prayers, I'm seeing things. One of my colleagues after teaching him now. Oh, wonderful. Teresa, you were part of the uh, morning encounter. Am I right? So glad to hear that. So glad to hear that. I'm so glad to hear that. Your eyes are opening. So glad to hear that. My God. Alice, um, good afternoon. Teresa, he said he's showing his true colors, talking to me anyhow. Okay, okay, okay. I make sense of that. I make sense of that. I, I, I follow, I follow what you are saying, uh, Teresa. Remember I said God is going to review things. God is going to review things. And our eyes are open. And uh, this is not just a once-off thing. Something that will continue to be operational in our lives. Our lives have already changed. We are shifted to another level. We are already shifting to another level. Oh my God. Thank you so much, man of God, for the encouragement. La Babo Salaba. Let us do likewise. Let us do likewise, family. YVE, Shalom. Let's do likewise. Let's share this live and bring as many people to this platform. For the Lord our God is mighty. He is mighty. There's nothing he cannot do. There's nothing he cannot do. Is it Ndiniello? I don't know if I have pronounced your name very well. Please, if I have not pronounced it well, don't be offended. I pray for you to get a job in the name of Jesus. You are praying, you are asking God to bless you the job. I pray that the job comes your way. Because when I look in the Spirit, when I look in the Spirit, I see 
disappointment after disappointment over your life. Disappointment after disappointment over your life. But I declare today to be your day of visitation. And I pray that today, uh, I pray, may God make you to smile today. I see the Lord putting that smile on your face. In the mighty name of Jesus, I release this prayer over you. You will come back here with testimony. Within three weeks, that's 21 days. Within 21 days, there is going to be major changes. You will see that the Lord's hand is upon you. Shake up, rose, you acknowledge the end of the Lord. You acknowledge the move of God in your life. There is an anointing, people of God, that I'm sensing right now. That anointing is to break. Is an anointing that breaks barriers. Is an anointing that opens doors. In this encounter, doors are opening. Doors are opening in this encounter. I'm talking about doors that were refusing to open. Doors that were shut for many, many years. I declare by the authority and the power of the Holy Spirit, let that door be opened for you in the name of Jesus. Oh my God. There is a door that you are believing God for. You want that door to open. You say, oh God, if this door can just open, my life will never ever be the same. That's the door I'm praying and I'm declaring over your life. Let that very door be opened in the name of Jesus. We declare open doors. Experience open doors. Come to a season of open doors. Come to that season. Come. Come to that season of open doors in the name of Jesus. But the Bible says, I set before you open door. I set before you open door. There is a season when doors are open. Every area, doors begin to open. Doors begin to open. I declare open doors in the name of Jesus. Angel Taurus, how are you? Everybody that is coming. Tendai, Chamberlain said, My life has been stagnant for a long time. Nothing's moving. Tendai. I break this evil altar. This evil altar. Because there's somebody that. That had an altar, but that person is dead. That person used to consult and worship idols as things, even materials that they were using. And that person is dead. It's a woman I'm seeing. Tenda is a woman I'm seeing that established an evil covenant, that established an evil connection that is now beginning to uh, influence the family. It has become, oh my God, it has become an evil cycle now, causing misfortunes, causing evil visitation, mysterious death, premature death, suffering and hardship, attacking marriages. I want to pray for you today. May the King of Glory touch you. May the King of Glory touch you. In the name of Jesus. Oh my God, faith, how are you, fifth? Uh, God bless you. I want to declare God's mighty end over you. Listen to me, Tendai. Listen to me, my Jesus. This evil spirit that has been tormenting your family is trying to bring shame. Even when I look at you right now, I'm seeing that garment. Like you have been in situations that just want to expose you. 
and bring shame into your life. But today, by the power that raised Jesus from the dead, I pronounce deliverance over you. May the Lord remember you. May the eyes of God, listen, the eyes of God are upon you. And I prophesy today, may your life begin to turn around. Tendai, uh, my God, listen to me. Listen to me. There's an anointing that God is bringing upon you for a turnaround of the family. I don't know what is this, but I see one of the important documents that just disappeared. You have had a disappearance disappearance of a very important document. It just disappeared. You had to put a lot of extra effort for you to look for it. It just disappeared. What am I seeing? Because I'm seeing a very important document disappearing. Tendai, you are going to help me out on this one. There is something that I'm seeing disappearing, just disappearing. My God. But I pray for you. The devil is a lie. He's defeated. Receive breakthrough. Receive deliverance in the name of Jesus. My God. In the name of Jesus, Kamamose Kabaya, Adrede Shalava, Matthew, greetings. Is it talent? Talent? Is it talent? Yes. It's talent, yeah. It's talent, it's talent. How are you? How are you doing? Kababosalava. Watching. Evidence. Mangava, how are you doing in Cape Town? God bless you. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Please, man of God, pray for my marriage. Okay, let God make let God make the right decision for me. Oh, Holy Spirit. So you don't know now, JJ mental, the situation has not been so good. Sometimes you have the mind to think that mm, maybe it's better for me to just uh, let it go. Sometimes we feel like, ah, let me just let it go. Is there any hope? Listen to me, J.J. Mendo. There is redemption. Stephen, God bless you for the kids. I appreciate and cherish them so much. Tap on the screen, somebody. Don't just be expected. Tap on the screen. Support the broadcast. Support the life. You tap on the screen and... Uh, I appreciate those that are sending their gifts. You are welcome to send yours too. You are welcome to send yours too. Those that have already sent their gifts, please, I appreciate. You can support by tapping, by tapping, as I'm also doing my part. The Lord God is using me as a vessel, speaking to your life to bless you. Respond, respond, okay? So, JJ Mento, I pray for God's hand. But what I'm seeing is the Lord is telling me redemption. When I'm looking at you, I'm hearing this word, redemption. And I'm asking God, and God says, there is redemption to your marriage. What is happening in your marriage? God is telling me that there is going to be redemption. And there is going to be deliverance concerning this thing. As I declare to you right now, I release that anointing of God over your life to bring deliverance and restoration concerning the issue of your marriage. I declare in the name of Jesus my God, I declare in the name of Jesus Christ, it looks like there's a demon that attacks your marriage uh, at a certain death. There are certain deaths of the month. If you observe, there are certain deaths of the month. I think, um, oh my God, what I'm seeing in the spirit, a certain death of the month when it's almost like, mm, my God. Which deaths usually characterize the full moon? When it's almost a full moon right now, that's the vision I'm seeing. Pray against this manipulation. It's a demonic manipulation because I see a, almost a half, a, a, a full moon. And God is saying, this is the time when the enemy plays around with time. That's the time usually your marriage experience some turbulence. What I'm speaking here may not just apply to you. Do you realize that they are demons that don't just operate. They operate according to the times. They observe times. Some of you, you're going to see that there are certain deaths of the month that you get so dry. 
Everything gets dry financially. You are dry. Those deaths of the month, the demon operates. There are certain deaths of the month. There is a time of the month where this demon wants to come. They, they are demons that are so timely. They, 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 they are seasonal. They observe time. I don't know if it makes it making sense. Angel Torres, what do you want God to do for you? I got it. I see you arranging things. Torres, you're arranging things, you're arranging things. But in these things that you're arranging, you are expecting. You're expecting a great, great return. But there is a problem there because I see you being frustrated because what is coming from there, it does not measure to the effort that you are putting. And I asked the Lord, what is the problem? God is telling me that uh, you, you, you are experiencing limitation. I want to pray for you, Torres, that God will deliver you from limitation because I see great, great, great promise over your life. There's a serious promise even over your life. If this promise comes, if we can pray right now and ask the Lord for that promise, I'm telling you, God is going to cause you to flourish. God is going to expand you right there in America right now i want to pray and break that limitation this is all i need to do father i pray for torres lord locate him remember him now in the name of jesus and cause your blessing to overflow in his life in the name of jesus i see a dispute i see a dispute when i look at you i see a dispute i'm just declaring what i'm saying Dumbo. god bless you my jesus oh my god matthew where are you matthew where are you mary how are you doing my Jesus, man de shalaba. May my doors open as well. I declare open doors. Let doors open. Let them open. Let them open. Let them open. Let them open. Are you believing God for a door? Which door? I believe in God for doors for my business. Uh, Rouse SA said that I need door for business. Receive that door in the name of the Lord Jesus. I declare that door to open for you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Listen to me, uh, Rouse. Uh, you know, Rouse. Listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. Oh, I see a, it is a divine link. Let me put it that way. There's a divine link that God is going to give you. You are getting into a time when you are going to meet someone. And that person is going to connect you to a certain business. This business is not just going to be operating local. It has its roots uh, out of the country out of the country. I don't know what you're dealing with, but I see your business having connection with something that is out of the country. And that business is going to uh, lift you. It's going to lift you. It's going to bring you to the map. It's going to bring you to the map. It's going to bring you to the map. And I pray for your health in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for your health. I pray for your health in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Because I see that whatever you're going through, it is affecting your chest. It's affecting your chest. I pray the Lord will touch you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, non fondo, may the Lord touch you, Mom. I received the gifts. I received the gifts. I received the gifts. Angel, did you receive that prophetic word? They have said, I need your prayers. I pray for you, Daddy. Um, happy, Daddy, Daddy, happy. Uh, Daddy, that mean. I pray for you, Daddy, happy. In the name of Jesus, may the Lord touch you. May the Lord touch you and bring unity and peace in your in your family, in your marriage, to be precise. May the Lord bring peace uh, in your home. Sandy, how are you doing? Oh, Jesus. Cindy, how are you? My God, my God, my God, my God, my God. Receive the touch of God right now. Yes, receive the touch of God right now. Whatever desire you have right now, I pray for you. Did you, did you come here with a desire? Did you come here expecting? If you come here expecting, may you receive. Remember this, you need to be expectant. The Bible says, uh, uh, if you read in the Bible, you understand that, listen, expectation is the breeding ground of miracle. If you are expecting something, receive. Cindy, how are you? My God, man, devil. Cindy, so what I'm seeing is that, like, you've been battling with this thing that has been happening, like the dream that keeps showing you uh, a group of people. It's like a crowd of people. And you are standing in front of this crowd of people. You are addressing them. So you have been battling, Cindy. I'm talking to you, Cindy, blessed Kumala. So you have been battling with yourself. Do I have a calling? 
And I want to confirm that calling right now. And I want to tell you that you do have that calling. There is an anointing of God that is upon your life. And God has commissioned you to minister, to preach the gospel. And when this time comes, uh, you will see God is going to uh, make it happen. God is going to make it happen. And look, uh, I see you, you have been experiencing a lot of uh, demonic arrows. Demonic arrows that have been coming against you against you against you against you so that sometimes you just wake up and you feel like your body has been beaten up you feel like you're weak thank you so much mom for the gifts but i pray for god to touch you and raise the standard in your life cindy i pray in the name of jesus everybody that is standing against your life everybody that is trying to pull you down i come against them in jesus name i declare the end of god over your life the mighty end of jehovah the mighty end of jehovah let jehovah rise in your life jesus my name i release that becky how are you doing how are you doing how are you doing how are you doing in the name of jesus i am well can't complain apostle thank you so much Jeff. thank you so much the lord be with you and increase you and your family fifth beautiful ashes always good to have you in the house always good to have you in the house always good to have you in the house yes always good to have you in the house mm, evelyn how are you doing how are you doing how are you doing how are you doing oh my god oh fee oh my god oh my god oh thank you very much if it is a fiction then let's help you to go to something real let's take you out of this and uh take you to a place where you find real stuff my god receive open doors remember when i started i said this encounter i hear the sound of doors you are believing god for a for a door what door are you believing god for the lord speaks in his word he said behold i set before you an open door my god i set before you an open door beautiful issues thank you very much all of you that are sending this uh that are bringing gifts god bless you i set before you an open door says the lord i set before you an open door this is a door that no man can close there is a door that when god opens it oh god nobody can close it no one can close it i am declaring now a door over your life that shall not be shut by anyone Oh, I am seeing a situation here of people that saw doors opening in their lives. You saw financial doors. You saw doors open in your life. But suddenly those doors just shut on you. They shut on you. And now you are no longer seeing the things that were happening. You are no longer receiving that financial flow. The flow of finances in your life has just ceased. It just ceased. It's like an abrupt... Uh, uh, um, ending an abrupt ending just you've been experiencing some flow of finances some some great stuff happening in your life but suddenly that flow is stopped and you wonder what has happened why is this the supply stopped now why am i no why am i no no longer getting uh, customers no longer getting clients it means that somebody something happened the door has been shut on you but today I pray in the name of Jesus. May the Lord God cause a permanent door to open for you. I declare a permanent door, the door that will not be shut by anyone. Oh my God, evangelist, the woman of God, I'm so glad to see you. I declare a door that will never be shut. The Bible says, I set before you an open door. And the Bible says when the Lord opens the door, nobody is going to be able to shut it. I love it when, when God, uh, when God, I love it on, on the encounter of, of Noah, my Jesus. When I read it, I, I, I felt my spirit uh, rejoicing. There is something about the ark of Noah that taught me something about doors. Do you know that the ark of Noah was not that perfect? In terms of the architect, in terms of the building, there is no way Noah was going to be very, very, very perfect to build the ark and make sure it's shut, it's, it's closed from all the, the water getting in, from the water getting in. There was no way he was going to be that precise, that 
are perfect to make sure that there is no water that can get in there. Obviously, there could have been some loopholes. But there is something that gave me a sense that the ark of Noah was not just material. It was the divine power of God. How do I get to know that? It was the divine power of God. The Bible says on the day when Noah finished to build the ark and he called all the animals, the clean and the unclean beasts, everything that God had instructed him. May the Lord bless every gifter. Everything that God had instructed him, Noah did according to the instruction. And the Bible says when Noah entered the ark, the Bible says, and the Lord shut him in. Oh yeah, my God. Mm. That is a secret. When I read that, I understood something. I understood something. The moment I read that portion of scripture, I got to understand that the ark was not just physical. It was a spiritual thing. It was something. It was a miracle. Though there were holes, though there were gaps for the water to get in, it could not end. Because the Bible says the Lord shut him in. The Lord shut him in. The door was not closed by Noah. It is God that is shut him in. My Jesus. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Lababo Shakaba. I pinned your, your comment. My Jesus. Listen to me. The Bible says God shut him in. The Lord himself shut him in. Meaning to say, it's God that closed the door of the ark. Meaning, even if the water would beat the ark, even if the water would be so harsh, even if the floods would be so raging, they could do nothing to that ark. It was not just the wood. It was the hand of God that was carrying the ark. The hand of God that was carrying the ark. Because the Bible says the fountains of the deep were opened and the fountains of heaven were also opened. And the Bible says the waters prevailed on the earth. The waters prevailed on the earth. But the more the waters, the floods were rising, the ark of Noah was rising. My Jesus. The more the floods were increasing, Guess what? My God, guess what? The more the floods were increasing, the ark of Noah was rising above. My God, was rising above. My Jesus, I want to declare and prophesy over somebody's life here. My God, I want to prophesy over somebody's life. I said, man of God, I am facing a serious situation. I am in a flood. I am facing, I'm in a flood right now. I want to declare, may the Lord's hand be upon you. May God lift you above the floods. May God lift you above that situation. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh my God. Be raised above the floods of the enemy. Listen to me. The Bible in the book of Isaiah 59, I believe. I believe. It says that. So shall they fear the name of the Lord. From the east from the, to the west. When the enemy shall come like a flood, my Jesus. The Spirit of the Lord shall raise a standard against him. The Spirit of the Lord shall raise a standard against him. When the enemy shall come like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall raise a standard against him. There is a standard that God is going to raise. Prophetess, how are you? Prophetess, God bless you. There is a standard that God is raising in your life today. In the name of Jesus, my God, I declare and decree today, let God raise a standard against the flood. I'm talking to somebody who says, man of God, I am facing floods. There are floods that are risen against me. I don't know the kind of floods that you are facing right now. I don't know the kinds of floods that are coming against you. But hear this, hear this. The Bible says, when the enemy shall come like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall raise a standard against him. As the standard that was raised upon the ark of Noah, may a standard be raised. The more the floods were rising, the ark was going up. It prevailed. The ark was going up. My Jesus. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Somebody says, God, I'm in a great flood right now. For the past three days, 
Nikki, I understand you. This is your word. And I declare and decree, may the spirit of the Lord lift a standard against you, against the flood that is coming against you. May the spirit of God lift a standard. When the enemy shall come like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall raise a standard. I pray that a standard be raised in your life. Let a standard be raised as the standard that was raised upon Noah's ark. For the word of God says, God shut him in. Oh my God. Ay, ay. Mm. <laughs> Listen to me. When God shuts you in, no one can open. Mm. When God shuts you in, in the place of safety. Oh my God. Somebody declare and say, God, shut me in my prosperity. Shut me in my prosperity, in my promotion, in my abundance. Shut me in that place of abundance, in that place of favor. Shut me in, in that place of goodness. Shut me in like God. He sh the Bible says God shut him in, in the place of safety. In the place of safety, God shut him in. That means nothing could open that door. Even if the door was not strong, but God himself shut the door. Shut the door. Even if the water could prevail and be raging all over the earth, it could not enter the ark because God shut him in. God himself had to shut him in. My God, listen. I declare in the name of Jesus that no demon shall have access. I deny access to that evil spirit. I deny access to that evil spirit. May the Lord shut you in. In the place of deliverance, in the place of abundance, may he shut you in. Let all negative forces Never be granted access in the mighty name of Jesus. If there is a door right now that demons are using to attack you, let that door be shut in the name of Jesus. I close every demonic door. I close every demonic door. Let me tell you, demons need doors. They don't just enter. Demons need doors. They need door. They need door. If there is no door, if there is no door, there is nothing they can do. Oh my God. Why did the devil engage with Eve in a conversation? All the devil was trying to do is to find a doorway. That's why the devil had to engage with Eve in conversation. It was only to find a way. To find a way. Do you realize something? Thank you very much for the gift. Uh, thank you so much, beautiful Ashes. Do you realize something? Do you realize something? Do you realize something? That Adam and Eve cohabited with the devil for a long time. For a long time cohabited with the devil. In other words, they stayed with him. He was allowed access in the garden. He was allowed access in the garden. But guess what? He was a useless devil because there was no door for him to enter their lives. There was no door to afflict them. There was no door. There was no door for him to do anything. They would meet him and then he would be a useless devil because there was no door. Can I tell you something? As long as you don't open the door, there's nothing the demons can do. There's nothing the devil can do. The devil capitalizes on the doors that we open. He capitalizes on the doors that we open. We are responsible many times for the doors that we open. Somebody say, man of God, tell me, what about me? I'm a victim of a door that, are, that will open. Listen to me, I, I, I feel for you and I'm here to pray with you. Some of you, you are victims of generational doors, evil generational doors that were opened on your behalf before you even came to be, before you came on this earth. 
there are doors that were opened. Somebody, somebody opened the door in the family. And that door is the door of premature death. Now family is going through premature death. And this death has its roots in a covenant that somebody made. And the covenant is affecting the whole family. Going after the family one by one, taking them down, taking them down, taking them down. I see somebody. He's a man of God. I am such a victim. I am such a victim. I see myself going through things that I don't know where they are coming from. I am trying to live right here. I'm trying to live according to the word of God. I'm trying to be a good person, to be a lawyer. I'm saving in the house of God. I am doing all the best I can. I give in the house of God. I save in the house of God. I pray, I fast, but I find myself battling with this evil door. There is an evil door that keeps on bothering me. What is going on let me tell you they are generational doors that have been opened by those that lived before us and that door keeps on causing chaos keeps on causing chaos i pray today in the name of jesus may god deliver you from evil doors may god deliver you from that generational door may god shut you in the place of deliverance may god oh my god oh my god oh my god may god shut you in the bible says god shut him in i love that i can preach the whole year on that god shut him in that's a sign of preservation that's a sign of divine covering. That's a sign of protection. God shut him in right in the place of safety. It was the power of God that sustained the ark. It was the power of God that kept the ark. If you want to know that it was the power of God that kept the ark. Look at how people were so pompous. I, I'm sure you watched that uh, uh, American movie that is called Titanic. Great, 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 great stuff. Great creation. A real life situation they are acting there. It's not just a movie. It's what transpired. They tried to put together facts of what transpired. Eyewitnesses giving them information. And the bottom line there, what I learned when I looked at that movie, I learned something. That Titanic was supposed to reach. But the problem is the confession of the people. The people felt self-sufficient. They never acknowledged God who has given them the wisdom. They never acknowledged God who has given them that wisdom to put that thing together. It was their man-made thing and they felt like they're in control of the world. They felt like they can do anything now. They did not involve the God who gave them wisdom. They were just to say, no, we are going to go. Because they declare that this is unsinkable. They declare that this, this, this thing cannot be, it cannot sink, it cannot do, it, nothing like that can ever happen. They were so confident. They were so confident, relying on their power. But what began to unfold was so, so, it was painful. It was just a way of God humbling men, just try to humble them. I don't know how you... You can interpret it maybe in a different way. Maybe you don't agree with my school of thought. It's not a problem. We see things differently. But what I learned when I look at it, I saw, hmm, I think here, yeah, people did not humble themselves to thank God and say, thank you for this, for this beautiful masterpiece. Can you help us as we are going? It is not about what you have made. It's about the hand of God. That is why I'm saying, what the, the, the Ark of Noah could not, maybe, it was far from Titanic. Maybe it was very far. It was very far in terms of everything. But it survived the raging storm. How do you explain that? That's the power of God. That is the power of God. That is the power of God. It's not by might, you know, by power. It's by my spirit. It's not by might, not by power. It's by my spirit. By my spirit, by my spirit, says the Lord. Not by might, not by power. But by my spirit, says the Lord. Shut me in. It's not by might, not by power. It's by my spirit. Always allow this. Always keep this in your mind. That it's not by might. It's not by might. It's by power. It's not by might, not by power. By my spirit, by might. Always acknowledge that. Always 
have that in your mind. That is not by might nor by power. It is by the Spirit of God that this situation, look at this miracle. It's a miracle. It's a miracle indeed. It's a miracle. So I pray for somebody here. I pray for somebody here. Shrewd from uh, Mauritius, I pray for you. May the Lord touch you. Every demonic door, I command you to be shut in the name of Jesus. Every demonic door, I command you to be shut in the name of Jesus. My God, my God, my God, my God. Every demonic door. You are a victim of that demonic door. You are a victim of that evil door. May that door be shut today. In the name of Jesus, God shuts. He can, if, if he, he, the Bible says here to shut him in. If God shut no in, that means he has power to close certain doors. God is not, on, God is not only, only going to open doors. He is also going to shut certain doors. There are other doors that God will close. The Bible says, if God closes that door, no man can open it. We are declaring today that let that evil door be shut forever in the name of Jesus. Let that door be closed. It's a door of failure. It's a door of suffering. It's a door of limitation. It's a door of stagnation. What kind of an evil door? You say that this is an evil door. This is an evil door. You found it there. You found it there. You found it there. You found it there. We declare today in the name of Jesus. Let it be shut. Every demonic door be shut and never be opened. We declare in the name of Jesus. Be shut and never be opened. The mighty name of Jesus Christ. Ah, yeah, my God. I hope uh, Mr. Brenton is here in peace. Are you in peace? Are you here in peace, say? Oh, my God. Are you here in peace? My God, I declare today that every evil door, do you realize there is one man that can open door? Yes. Oh, my God. Causing trouble. Okay. Hmm. Okay. All right, Mr. Mr. Brenton, say, let's help you to find the right platform. Maybe here it's not relevant to you. All right, thank you very much. Thank you very much for coming through. Mm. Oh, my Jesus. One man, one man can, can open a door. Do you realize that everything is about the door? It's about the door. Bible says, through one man, sin entered the world. One man, one man, one man. Through one man, sin found its doorway into the world. Yes. Sin found its way into this world. And even now, it's, it became a battle of humanity. It became a, a, a problem of all humanity. Through one man. It was just one man. Just one man. The door was opened by one man. One man was good enough to open that door. The Bible speaks about Adam as the living spirit, as a life-giving spirit. First Adam was what? A living soul. Second Adam was a life-giving spirit. Life-giving spirit life-giving spirit. Are you learning something? Through one man, sin came into the world. And through one man, also, that door had to be shut. That door had to be closed. What is the purpose of the coming of the second Adam? It was to close the door that the first Adam had opened. The second Adam is coming to shut that door for us, to close the door, to break the power of sin. So you need to understand that sin power has been broken. Sin power has been broken. It has been broken. It has been broken. Sin power has been broken. 
What am I talking about? Somebody say, man of God, why, why do I continue to, to struggle with sin? It's because you haven't found your position. If you find your position in Christ, you will, you will, never, you will not struggle with sin. There is a position in him that when you find, you will not struggle with sin. What position is that? It is to walk in the spirit. Mom, I declare the touch of God over you. Fear not. The Lord is working it out. You will rejoice. You will rest. There is a place in him which when you stand, you will not struggle with sin. Because sin power has been broken. Sin power has been broken. It has been broken already. You need to acknowledge that. You need to acknowledge that. Somebody is saying, man of God, I think I'm so deep in sin. I cannot come out. Listen to me. You are acknowledging your bondage more than the deliverance. Acknowledge the deliverer more than you acknowledge your, 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 your affliction. Acknowledge the healer more than you acknowledge your sickness. The reason why many people cannot be cured is because they acknowledge their sicknesses more than they acknowledge the healer. They acknowledge their sickness more than they acknowledge the healer. That's why it's very difficult to bring them out of their sicknesses. That's why it's very hard for them to come out of that situation. Acknowledge your healer even in the middle of sickness. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for acknowledging. Beautiful ashes. Thank you so much. Janelle, thank you so much. You have to acknowledge the deliverer. The reason why Daniel, the reason why Abednego, Meshach, and Shadrach were not consumed by the fire, they acknowledged the deliverer more than their situation. They said, all oh, king, live forever. We are not going to bow to this situation. We are not going to bow to the idols of Babylon. Even if, the, even if God delivers us, even if he does not, we are not going to bow. We are not going to submit to the enemy. We are not going to submit to the evil. We are not going to submit to the devil. We will not submit. Daniel acknowledged the deliverer. The moment you acknowledge the deliverer, man of God, how do I go about it? Sometimes you just have to say, I'm healed. Jesus Christ is my healer. I'm delivered. Jesus Christ is my deliverer. Every time, even when you see symptoms, don't let symptoms determine your confession. Don't confess according to symptoms. The problem is you, your confession is derived from, 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 from symptoms. My God. When you, your confession, the devil wants you to confess what is going on. Do not confess what is going on in your life. Don't confess your situation. No, 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 no. Confess what God is saying about you. What is God saying about you? What is God saying about you right now? God says you are the herd and you are not the tail. That's what he says. When God looks at you, you are broke. You have no money in the account. You have no money in your pocket. What is the mind of God over your life? What does God say about you? God says, I have blessed you with abundance. God says, abundance is your portion. God says, your cup is overflowing. That is what he's saying. Your cup is overflowing. Your cup is overflowing. That's what God is saying. What is God saying when you are sick? God says, by the stripes of Jesus, you are healed. Can you hear the language? You are healed. You are healed. You are healed. You are healed. You are not going to be healed. I told you, don't ask God to heal you. I think that is, that is, that is a wrong prayer. Because when you are, how do you ask for something that has already been done on you? How do you ask for something that has already been done? How do you ask for something? Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. Somebody helps you, somebody, uh, uh, let's say somebody has done something for you. You are in need of money. Somebody brings money or somebody tells you. All right, they don't bring the money, they tell you. So maybe you are in, let, let's just say you are in need. You are in a deficit, you need money. Let's just say you need 3,000. And then somebody tells you, Somebody says, don't worry about the 3,000 you want. It's given. Do you keep on asking for it? Or you make plans to receive it? You make plans. 
to get that money. Maybe that money is kept somewhere. You make plans maybe to give your details so that that person can send you their, their money. And that person is telling, the moment that person tells you, I have the money, don't worry. Do you keep on asking for it or you say, ah, that's it. I have the money, sure. I, wh why should I worry? This is exactly what is happening in the things of the spirit. You are healed. Believe it, you are healed. So when you get sick, how do you pray? Thank you for healing me. I don't know myself. I am not, I don't know about the headache. I know that I'm healed. I don't know about the back pain. I don't know about the chest pain. Thank you so much for that. I don't know about the, 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 the diabetes. I don't know about the asthma. I don't know about the arthritis. I don't know about the HIV. I don't know about the cancer. All I know is that I'm healed. This is all I know. All I know is that I'm healed. I'm healed. So sin power has been broken. Just tell yourself, sin power has been broken. It's broken. It has been broken. More than 2,000 years ago, the Bible says, sin shall not have dominion. It said, sin shall not have dominion over you because you are not under the law. What does it mean that you are not under the law? That means you are delivered. The power of sin. Sin got its power from the law. So the Bible says you are no longer under the law. So that means the power of sin has been broken. Has been broken. It has been broken. Sin power has been broken. And what is the root of all the affliction? If the Bible is talking about sin, you need to understand that poverty, suffering, hardship, limitation, all these things, they, they find they are hinging on this thing called sin. Every affliction has got its hinge on the what? On sin. Without sin, there'll be no affliction. And you have to understand that sin is not actually, there's a difference between the word sin in the Bible and sins. You need to understand sins with plural S and sin. They are different. So some of you don't realize that those two words are different in the Bible. Look, when the Bible writes the word sin, usually it's capital letter S-I-N. And there is another sins and sin. They are two different. They, 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 are, they are talking of different things. Sin, S-I-N, is talking about the nature. That, that nature, that evil nature, which, was, uh, which is passed on. The nature of sin, the fallen nature. That is what has been broken. That is what powers all the afflictions. That is what powers all the sufferings that you see. That's why Jesus, when he saw that man who was brought by four people, they were peering him and the Bible says they tried to end where Jesus was. There was a lot of crowd, a mammoth crowd covering the place. So those men came carrying that man and they could not find space to end. And they had to go above the roof, my Jesus Christ. I love their faith. They had to, they, they did not take an offer and answer. They were not discouraged by the obstacles. This crowd was acting as an obstacle. They said, we're not going back. They had to climb on top of the roof. Can you imagine? They had to break the roof. Jesus, if you want something, you will get it. This is the, the this is faith. This is faith. And the Bible says, when Jesus, when they broke the roof, they took the men down by a rope. And the Bible says, when Jesus saw their faith, I like it. You can see faith. Jesus, in this instance, he saw their faith. You know, there is a faith in action. You, you can see that mm -mm -mm, this is faith. Jesus saw their faith. Somebody say, I'm breaking the roof. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Somebody say, I'm breaking the roof. Say, for my breakthrough, I'm breaking the roof. Somebody say, I'm breaking the roof. Say, for my deliverance, I'm breaking the roof. For my promotion, for my marriage, I am breaking the roof. I am not begging down. I am breaking the roof. Oh, my God. The man had to break the roof. What is that roof we are talking about? That is limitation. What is the roof we are talking about? That's a barrier. 
what that roof you are talking about. That's a limitation. Somebody declared and said, I'm breaking the roof. The men said, we are breaking the roof. We are not going back without our miracle. We have to break the roof and get our miracle. Somebody say, I'm breaking the roof. Oh my God. There is a generation that will break the roof. Hallelujah. There is a generation that will not go back without him. There is a generation that will not go back until revival has come upon the earth. Are you ready to break the roof? They did not care. Oh my God. There are times when you just don't have to go. They didn't care the cost. How much it was the cost? They just said, we have to break the roof. We have to attract, to draw the attention of the master. They had to, 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 to remove and they brought the men by the rope. And the Bible says, when Jesus saw their faith, Jesus saw their faith. He saw their faith. There is faith that you can see. Faith that can be hidden. Ayababa, Sakabaya. Hey, my Jesus. Some of you, it's a roof. It's just there is a roof that is just hindering you. That's a symbol of a body. That's a symbol of a body. Some of you, there is a roof. Some of you, it's a wall. If you have to break the wall, you got to break it. If you have to break the wall, you got to break it. If you have to break these men, they broke the roof. Obviously, they, they, this, the, the owner of the house, obviously, they were logistics. There were other things. They said, we will see that later. We need a miracle for our friend. Need a miracle for our friend. The Bible says when they did that, Jesus did not see a broken roof. Jesus was not even worried about the broken roof. He never even rebuked them for breaking someone's roof. What Jesus saw was not a broken roof. What Jesus saw was their faith. He never accused them. Why are you doing that to someone's roof? Jesus did not see that. What he saw was the faith. They had faith. They had faith. And Jesus, when he saw them, I like what, how, how Jesus addressed the situation. He said, son, your sins are forgiven. Thank you very much. Son, your sins are forgiven. But this, this man was paralyzed. Paralyzed. But Jesus is not talking about the paralysis. Jesus is not talking about the paralysis. He says your sins are forgiven. That means something. That means something. That is showing us something. And the other skeptics were there. They began to say, you know what? Who is this man that has power to forgive sin? Jesus said, tell me something. What is easy to say to this man, take your bed and go, or to say your sins are forgiven? These men lacked revelation. They did not understand that sin power is the contributor. Sin power. Where there is sin, there is all bad things. Where there is sin, poverty is Rampant. Where there is sin, disappointment is rampant. Where there is sin, hardship, suffering, affliction. Sin is the cause, is the is the door that, that, that all these things used to end. You have been told from time immemorial to run away from sin. You have been told from time immemorial, run away from sin. Why? Running away from sin sin does, is not doing God a favor. Let me tell you, when you avoid sin, when you run away from sin, you are not doing God a favor. Please get take note of that. You are not doing God a favor. The Bible says even if we become unfaithful, he cannot deny himself. He remains faithful. Even if we change, he does not change. He's the same. Yesterday, today, and forever. So, mm, my God, God bless you. God bless you. Hmm. So God does not change. So if we are, if God is telling us to not to commit adultery, God is telling us not to be a false witness. God is telling us it's for our own good. It's for our own good. It's for our own good, not for Him, because for Him He is holy. Even if all creation chooses to rebel against God, all creation chooses to be unholy. God will never change to to to, to conform to His creation. He will never change. 
He will remain holy. So when God is telling us to be holy, it's for our own benefit. It's not for his benefit. It's for our own benefit. It's for our own benefit. It's for our own good. Because the moment we begin to live in sin, we have given the enemy a leeway. Let me use the word legal right. We've given the enemy legal right. Do you understand when it comes to properties, those that have properties, they understand very well. You, you can be in a property, but if you don't have the, the documents that backs you up about that property, no matter how, or if, if you go there and sit there, that will never really secure that property. You don't have the legal right to be there. The legal right to be there, you don't have it. But if you, somebody has got a legal right for that property, they have a legal right, they, they, that gives them access to the property, that gives them the right to that property. So there is nothing you can do. Even if you go there and you try to do whatever, as long as the, somebody has the legal right to that property, you are likely to face a lot of trouble. You're going to face a lot of trouble. You face a lot of trouble. And also, you will not just do away with somebody that is a legal right unless you had to go through the, 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 the channels, go through the issues. Maybe you have to go through the court in order to change the deeds and whatever the, that concerns that property. Otherwise, if somebody has a legal right, you cannot do away with them. You can't. This is what the devil seeks in many people's life. Why does the devil lure us or push us to sin all the devil wants is when we get into sin that gives him the legal right to attack us that gives us a, a, a legal right he has a legal right even if you say come on come on come on sometimes sometimes i always teach about i always teach about different dimensions of deliverance you remember i talked about different dimension of deliverance do you know sometimes come out come out may not be enough for a demon to go but some demons will tell you you can't chase me because you got what i want you have something in you that i want you are feeding me so i will stay there because you are giving me food that means you are doing what i want why are you chasing me you are obeying me god bless all the gifters do you do you follow what i'm saying the demon will tell you i have a legal right to be here i have a legal right to be here So now, in the ministry of deliverance, in the ministry of deliverance, follow me, follow me. Don't lose me. And I don't want to lose you. In the ministry of deliverance, when God started introducing me to a ministry of deliverance, I'm not trying to, to, to scare you, but I want you to be very careful and to be spiritual in everything. So now there is, I went to a school. I used to minister to school. Now, those days, schools could have gatherings and um, men of God would be called. So they, this, they organized a meeting, very zealous young people. They organized a meeting. It was packed with, with students, packed with students. So they said, men of God, come. When they I prayed, I went there with the power of God. I had not, I was not, I was a young preacher, not much exposed to deliverance. I think God was introducing me to the ministry of deliverance. I went to the school. I started to preach the gospel, preach the gospel. And I was talking about principalities and powers. And as I was in the middle of my sermon, it was a fire sermon. God gave me the grace. I was just declaring things in power. Demons begin to manifest from within the floor. Vicious demons. Some of them were violent. Some students were violent, picking up chairs. And it was, it was chaotic, I'm telling you. Very chaotic. So I knew that mm, there is something here. There is something here. There is something here. So what happened? I want to I want to single out a particular incident that happened there. So what happened? We, we prayed, we prayed, and God gave us grace to cast out those devils. Thank you so much, beautiful ashes. To cast out devils. Mm. 
So as we were in the process of deliverance, we delivered, we delivered, we delivered, we delivered many people, we delivered many people, many students, we delivered some of them, confessed and delivered. But there came a small, tiny girl. I remember that tiny girl. Oh my God. Very small, tiny girl, small body. And we cast the demon from that girl. Thank you very much, beautiful ashes. As we were doing that, I noticed something. That demon was so adamant. It was so, so defiant. That demon was defiant. She was actually very... The demon was speaking through that day. I said, I'm not going. So I tried to cast that demon. I tried all means I know from the book. Because I didn't have much experience. So I was just trying to cast it, cast it, cast it, cast it. It's not going. It's not going. She's just kicking, kicking people, kicking, breaking things there. And I came to a time when I was getting tired. Physically, I was also getting tired. Physically, I was getting tired. I was coming to a level where I was getting tired. And then when I was just going to sit, I'm sweating. I said to the other guys that were with me, guys, I think keep praying for you. Keep praying for you. Let me sit down and meditate. As I sat down to meditate, to ask the Lord, what should I do in this situation? The Lord said, legal ground. That's what. And I said to the guys that were there. I said to the guys that were there. Can you? There were some girls that were there helping us. I said to them, come. They came there. And I said to them, help me to remove this chain for a while. So they removed that chain for a while, that necklace. They gave it to me. I just took it in my two hands and I said, I declare deliverance and fire on this necklace. Guess what? That girl screamed and jumped almost like in a way that I've never seen. And the demon said, why? Why? Why are you doing that? You are breaking my covenant. And from the moment I just prayed for that necklace, the demon left. And that girl started to narrate how she got that necklace. She got it from her aunt. That was, uh, that was somewhere in the aunt told her, look, don't take away this necklace. Keep it with you. All the time, you have to keep it. Keep it always with you. Keep it with you. Keep it with you always. Is it that, I'm, uh, listen, get me right, get me right. I'm not saying necklaces are bad and all jewelers. No, no, no. But that particular one was a covenant. There was a covenant day. And that is what was giving that demon the legal ground. That is what was giving the demon legal ground and legal right to not to go. Even if I was trying to cast it out, that demon had legal right because of the covenant. Because of the covenant. Some of you here, there are covenants that are, that are made. These covenants are there in your life. And some of these covenants also are family covenants. These are family foundations. And they are giving the demon legal right. You, some of you, how many of you, you have been battling with that demon. You have been fighting that situation. It's not going fight in that situation but it's not going come to think of it it could be a covenant it could be a covenant that is giving that demon the legal right to be there giving that demon the legal right to be there today i pray in the name of jesus oh my god i pray in the might name of jesus may god deliver you from any evil covenant may god deliver you from any evil covenant that is giving leeway to demon. That is giving right to demon to torment you. Anything that is giving demon right to attack you. Anything that is giving demon access to attack you. I command it to be broken in the name of Jesus. Let, let it be broken. By fire, by fire, by fire, by fire, by fire, by fire. Let it be broken. In the name of Jesus. I command it to break. In the name of Jesus, I command it to break. That which is giving that situation legal right to remain. You have tried your best. You have fasted. You have tried everything that you can. But it looks like there is no shifting. This, this situation is so defined. This situation is so stubborn. I command everything that is giving that situation 
legal right to be in your life. Let it be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Let it be broken in the name of Jesus. Is it an idol? Let it be broken in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mom, for the gift. Is it a covenant? Is it a curse? Let it be broken in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Whatever it is, it has got a name. I command it to break. In the name of Jesus Christ, it has to break right now. It has to break. Some of you, you are getting your deliverances right now. Some of you, you are collecting your deliverance right now because we are dealing with this root. We are dealing with the root of the problem. We are dealing with the root where the problem is, is getting its strength. It's a covenant. It's an altar. It's whatever it is. Let it be broken in the name of Jesus and receive your deliverance today. Receive your freedom today. Be totally released. 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 In the mighty name of Jesus, my God. Ah, oh, thank you so much, Baj. Oh my God. The power of God is touching you. Holy Spirit, shake them now. Holy Spirit, search the mighty name of Jesus. Oh my God. Mm, receive the grace. My God. I declare in the name of Jesus. I declare right now in the name of Jesus. Everything that is giving the devil the legal right, the permission to torment you, the permission to afflict you, let it be broken in the mighty name of Jesus. Let it be broken in the name of Jesus. It is breaking by fire. It is breaking by fire. It is breaking by fire. It is breaking by fire in the name of Jesus. It's breaking by fire. Oh my God, I want you to give Jesus glory because you are being set free. Jesus, my name, you are being delivered wherever you are. Hear me, the power of the Lord is touching you. Distance is not a barrier. Distance is not a barrier. Distance is not a barrier. Receive the divine touch of God wherever you are right now. Be liberated in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I'm talking about legal right. Something that allows the enemy to operate. Some people, is it even if you try to cast it out? Because if that legal ground is not addressed, you will still see that demon coming. That's why some of you, you just have to come out of this habit. You got a habit that you, you, you know it's not right. That habit, do you have an idea? It's giving the enemy advantage over you. That habit is giving the enemy advantage over you. That habit, if you can stop it, you will not have the attacks you are going through. If you can stop it, you will not see the other things you are seeing right now. You got to shut the door. You also must work together with God to close every possible door that the enemy is using to end. You have to cooperate got to work together with God. Some doors, God would want them to be closed. But you also keep them open. You got power over certain doors. There are certain doors that you have control over. Those ones, you got to close You got to close them. You got to close them. Those ones, God cannot help you. Because he's waiting for you to close them. They are even doors of our house. You cannot blame God when you, if you leave your door open. And the thieves come to steal. You will not say, God, where were you? Because you left the door open. This is something you have power over. You left the door open. This is something you had control over. You will not blame God for that. Because you had, you were supposed to secure the house. You were supposed to secure the place. Lock the door. Some of the things, we have the power to do that. We have the power to secure the place. If you don't do that, we are going to suffer affliction. So as a matter of fact, other people are going through self-imposed or self-imposed affliction. Self-afflictions where you are, this affliction is coming to you because it's, your, it's the door that you're opening. The moment you close that door, you begin to be happy. 
you should begin to experience the peace of God. Glory to God. Oh my Jesus. Oh my Jesus. I hear you. Oh my Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I gotta go now. I gotta go now. Mm. I gotta go now. My God. Mm. Mention your case. Let me see those of you that need the word of prayer. Let me just go through uh, your cases. Some people were trying to write and uh, I was still busy declaring the word of God. Listen to me. Let me tell you something. If I'm declaring right now and speaking the word of God and you mention your case here on the screen, even if I don't mention your name, the grace that is here is strong enough. The moment you bring it on, you have already submitted it before God. You will receive the touch of God. Even if I don't mention your name, God is already touching you. That means if you just presented your case here, the Lord God has already touched you. Expect a miracle. Expect to testify. Teresa said what? Prayer of repentance. Teresa, may God have mercy on you. Just say, Son of David, have mercy. Forgive me for all my sins and cleanse me, Lord. Cleanse me. Wash me with your blood. Thank you. Thank you. That's the simple prayer you have to pray. Mom, I, did, I declare the hand of God over you. The Lord God is with you and he will comfort you. He will give you rest. He will give you rest. I want to tell you something. This situation you're going through, Mom, it will soon be over. Yes, one day you will sing praises and joy. This is the prophetic word I'm giving you now. You're going to sing praises and joy. All those that are fighting against you, all those that are trying to resist the release of this money, the Lord God is going to arrest them. And your money is going to come to you, whether the devil likes it or not. It's going to come to you in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much. Looking for a job. Thank you so much, Fifth. Thank you so much, Jenna. Thank you so much, men of God. Uh, looking for a job and healing. 650, receive that job and healing in the mighty name of Jesus. Fifth, receive deliverance in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. What is God speaking in my life today? I'm a man of God. I'm finishing my third day of fasting. Oh my God. Oh my God. Listen to me. God is telling me that uh, uh, greater doors are opened for you. Greater doors are, are opened for you. You shall see the fruits of this fasting. You shall see great process of this fasting. And you shall celebrate. The Lord God is bringing a total turnaround in your situation. Um, but even as you are finishing your fasting, I want you to know something. Oh my God, your life will never ever be the same. Oh my God. Rainbow said what? Um, pray for my what? Ticket still not released. I pray for a ticket to be released. Remember, in the name of Jesus, I declare the hand of God. Let your ticket be released. I pray for financial breakthrough and uh, be shortlisted. Dima, be shortlisted. Be shortlisted and this time get a job. Get a job. Let your job be released. In Jesus' name. Joy said what? My husband, he is in life support. His name is John Clement. He's in America. John Clement, we speak healing over you. We call you in the mighty name of Jesus out of that coma. We call you back to life. John Clement, we call you back to life. In the name of Jesus, let the power of God touch you. Right in that I see you. In the mighty name of Jesus, receive life. In Jesus' mighty name, receive life in the name of Jesus. He is on the life support, support. But I pray that the Lord God has touched him. And I know God has touched him. We will, go, we will receive a testimony. We will receive a testimony. Mm, Gertrude, looking for a well-paid job. Gertrude, the Lord God grants that to you. Get a paying job in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Glory, 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 glory. Uh, talent, talent, I pray for me. Finish my master's tal uh, talent. I pray for you. Receive the grace to finish your master's in the name of Jesus. Janelle, I thank God for healing you. You are healed indeed. In Jesus' mighty, mighty name. Lift up your mantles right now. Lift up your mantles. Lift up your mantles. Lift up your mantles. Lift up your mantles. I'm going to pray for your mantles. Oh my God. I'm going to pray for your mantles. I'll be out of this place. I'll see you in the night encounter. Uh, yesterday I could not come there because we had a, a power failure here. Nancy, I pray for you uh, for the promise of a new job to come through in Jesus' name. Yesterday we had power power failure, so I couldn't come for the night encounter. My, my apologies 
for the inconvenience caused because I know some of you, you were waiting for that session. You were counting on it, so I couldn't come. I'm sorry about that, but they've managed to restore the power. I believe that this night encounter, we will not be disturbed. We will not be disturbed, okay? Let me see those of you that have got their mantles. If you have got your mantles, say I'm ready, say I'm ready, say I'm ready. Say I'm ready so I pray. So I'm ready so that I can pray. So that I can pray. So that I can pray. Say I'm ready so I'm ready. All right, ready, ready. Uh, so lunge, uh, you're welcome, you're welcome, you're welcome. All right, wonderful. Let me pray. Father, I anoint their mantles today in the name of Jesus for favor, for breakthrough. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father God, I pray, everybody lifting up their mantle, I declare your favor, I declare open doors in the mighty name of Jesus, open doors. Father, I declare permanent doors that will never, never be shut. Permanent good doors in the mighty name of Jesus that will never be shut. In Jesus' my name, Lord, I pray today, anything that is giving legal right to the enemy in their life, let it be removed from them. Let it be uprooted. Let it be flushed out. Anything that is giving room, anything that is giving legal right to the enemy to torment them, let it be removed. Let it be flushed out. Let it be uprooted out of their lives. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I declare in Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Lord, for anointing those mantles. Let me tell you something. Those mantles are anointed. They are anointed. They are anointed. They are anointed. Apply them by faith. Apply them by faith. Apply them by faith. You are going to testify. You are going to testify to the goodness of God. You are coming back here with a testimony. Oh, glory to God. As I drink the water, so shall it be. Yes. Jesus, my name. Some of you are coming here to testify. Coming here to testify. Yes. I want to thank God for all the gifters, those that are supporting this channel. May the Lord richly bless you and increase you. Let me also invite those who want to plant off this platform. What do I mean? You want to send your seed direct. You want to send, send it in cash. You don't want to send it by gift. You want to send it straight here. This is your seed. If it's your breakthrough seed, name it. If it's your deliverance seed, 